So, uh, welcome everybody to our uh, fireside chat. My name is Max Shapiro. Uh, I do a number of things in Silicon Valley. Uh, I run a headhunting recruiting firm working with early stage high tech startups. And we work, uh, fill absolutely every position. We have a very unique model for those companies who say, like many of the companies here today say, we need to raise a half a million or a million dollars to bring on some great people. We have a model that we call employees without paychecks. And we find people to work for options only for three months. Uh, in addition, I'm co-founder of an incubator in the Twitter building called Runway. If anybody's uh, interested in coming up and visit, please let me know afterwards. And I run three monthly pitch events for early stage startups who pitch to panels like this, panels of VCs and angels. So uh, keep very busy in Silicon Valley. Uh, it's a very exciting time, you know, as we know here. A uh, number of people this morning were complaining about the traffic coming down from the city, coming up from San Jose, coming from Marin, it took me two hours to get down here, and I tell people, don't complain about the traffic. It's busy because there's all this innovation and technology going on in the world capital of what's happening in high tech, and I think we're all very fortunate to be here. And I also want to commend all the Korean companies for doing an absolutely fantastic job on their pitches. I'd like to give them all a nice hand. Appreciate it. So we're going to be talking for the next 20 minutes, or our panel will be, about marketing, about what it takes to enter the U.S. market to do it wisely. You know, Peter Drucker, who's one of the fam most famous management gurus, said it's innovation and marketing are two very important factors to a company's success. We've seen the innovation this morning. We've seen a lot of great innovation. Marketing, let's, let's talk about that. And to talk about that, we've got a wonderful panel. And rather than sitting here and reading their bios, which I hate when that happens, I'm going to ask each of them to introduce themselves, uh, starting with Jack. Is this on? Yep. I am a CEO of Nova Globe. And Nova Globe is an international business and marketing company. What we do is we work with executives from around the world to bring them into new markets to look at different opportunities. I also do forensic marketing which I work with investment bankers to look at their distressed companies and to see if I can bring them back to life through the marketing process. I also represent a German investment firm that works in the area of e-health. And what they do and what they're looking for is Korean and international companies. And they have a 50 million euro fund right now looking for technology companies like the ones that were presented here. Also, I am an instructor at the University of California, Berkeley, in the IDP program. I work with international business executives to help them enter new markets, to understand marketing, to work with competitive companies and how to analyze them and how to be bringing more profit for those companies. So I do that, other types of work in the area. I have other opportunities we can talk about in the Hollywood area and variety shows and so forth. But mostly I concentrate on businesses, bringing businesses to life and helping them go abroad. Shaker? Uh, hi, my name is Shaker Hussain. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Creative Chaos, uh, along with being a partner at a company called IBM Cap. Uh, Creative Chaos uh, works in about 40 plus uh, international markets. Uh, we help startups and large scale companies solve business problems around the software space. Um, IBM Capital is a company which invests in startups, so these are two universes which are sort of uh, melded together. Uh, we came to the US market in 2000, and since then, I've been helping other international companies come to the US and also access markets all over Asia and the Middle East. Uh, we concurrently we work with about 10 to 15 startups every year, and uh, that's uh, an advise them through the fundraising process on the technology stack. Uh, owning a software company means that we're able to take away a lot of the technology risks before, and uh, we help a lot of uh, investment companies also find opportunities and invest in these startups. So. Hi everyone, um, I'm Ben Larson, I'm a director and mentor for the Founder Institute. Uh, we're an early stage startup accelerator, uh, basically looking for aspiring entrepreneurs in the very beginning, idea stage, 
um, and help them quickly build a strong foundation that allow them to build an enduring and meaningful company. So not just a flash in the pan, but a company that will stand the test of time. Uh, I've also spent the last two years working for a headquarters, uh, Founder Institute, in which we do this program in over 100 cities around the world. Um, it's allowed me the opportunity to kind of interact with these different ecosystems, really kind of see if at all if there are disconnects between Silicon Valley and, and the local ecosystems around the world. Um, and so it's been really eye-opening for me. And I've been able to relate that knowledge into my role as a pitch coach here in the Valley, uh, working with some of the Korean companies recently, actually, and trying to prime them for what it is like to pitch and stand out in Silicon Valley. Um, other than that, I've uh, just kind of immersed myself in, in helping young startups get their start. So whether it's through my work with incubators, um, hanging out at Runway, um, you know, I just, I love giving back the knowledge that I've been so lucky to receive here in the Valley. Great. Uh, pass the mic uh, down to Jack. We'll start at this end. What I would like to ask all the, what I'd like to ask all the panelists to do is give us two or three really good ideas that you think can help the Korean companies as they try to enter the U.S. market. Let's we'll start with Jack, please. Well, first of all, if you look at all the 24 companies that were presented here, only one was truly a marketing company. And do you know which one that was? Anybody have any ideas? Which one was truly marketing? Knew how to enter the market, who the customer was, how to sell to that customer, who their channels were, all of these different types of things, and knew about what it was going to take to enter the market. There was basically one, and that was the last one, clear here, from my standpoint. So when companies are presented, when you look at all the companies that are presented today, what they were trying to address is these gentlemen that are sitting at the table over here. But going back to Max's comment earlier, there's only two things that Peter Drucker said that matter and that's innovation and marketing. Money is easy, believe it or not, to get. The hardest part is how to get into those channels, how to understand what the customer's needs are, so you have the customer needs, the channels, how to compete with your competitors in those channels, because most of them are already being used by your companies. So as an example, if I may use a Korean company that wasn't presented today, but that's in the other room, there's a battery company, RCK Batteries, if you look in the other room. And they're gonna go and compete against Duracell and other types of battery manufacturers in the United States that have control of that market. So for them, the question is, how do you get into that Walgreens store? Or how do you get into that Safeway store and consistently provide products to them that you have to ship from Korea. All those logistics have to be worked out. So when you're developing your plan, your business plan, before you even present to these gentlemen here, you have to think all of those steps through. And then you're in a better position to get money from these gentlemen than you would be by just standing here and not having your act together. Uh, Shakir, I, I know that, that you feel that you know you just the United States is not one homogenous entity as far as marketing concerned as, mar as far as marketing is concerned. Can you talk a little bit about different areas, how important it is to, to market differently in different parts of the U.S. and any general ideas that you have as well? Sure, I, I think that uh, culture plays a very important part when you're entering a new market, and when you look at the U.S. Uh, as well, it's not just one large market. Uh, there are cultural differences between the East Coast and the West Coast, between the Midwest and the South. And I think for any foreign company going into any market, whether it's coming into the US or going out to uh, uh, another market in Asia or Africa, I think it's really important to focus on the culture. Uh, and, and I think the importance of local partners also can be downplayed. If you're entering a new market, uh, having people on the ground to help you understand those differences and bridge them, I think can only be beneficial to your uh, product or your service that you're bringing into a market. And whether it's uh, marketing consultants or comms, uh, I think that it's money well spent rather to uh, build a, a marketing plan in isolation 
being able to test the water and getting local specialists on board. Ben? Any, any thoughts on, on the most important strategies that these companies can, can adopt to, to make a dent in the U.S. market? Yeah, sure. Um, I've, I've noticed some trends, you know, seeing the different companies pitch. Um, like Jack was pointing out, you know, there's, there's this tendency to like not really be able to sell themselves properly, right? There, there's one company that properly marketed themselves. Um, so what I boiled it down to, I think, is, is just focus and, and a little bit of um, self-realization. It's like knowing where you're at in the process of selling your product and, and how to tell that story. So everywhere from you know highlighting both your holding company's name and your product's name, like it just adds a ton of confusion when you're up here pitching. It's like I want to know what product you're pitching and where you're at in the process of developing that product. The same things with vision and where you're currently at. So I know that it's great to have a big vision and you have this vision of the future that's going to be massive. But you can't sell that throughout your pitch. Like we need to have a sense of where you're at producing that product and how you're going to address your target market at that time. It's a fine balance. You need to be able to sell that vision of the future and, and suspend disbelief, but at the same time, you need to be very grounded and laser focused. So um, I, I think that these comments are well taken and, and a lot of them pertain to the pitches, but okay, let's assume these companies have their funding and now they're trying to hit the US market. You know, what do they do first? Give me one or two good things that they should do in, in terms of focus and action steps. One of the things that you need to do is to get not a marketing company, but a marketing assessment person to assess the market. And like he was saying, the United States has multiple markets, but the question is, what is the demographic that you're going after specifically? And whether or not being an international business person like you are, is it even that the American market is the best market for you? Looking at some of the products that were just presented, I would recommend going into different markets where you don't have so much competition to be able to do that. But the first thing you need to know is what, who your channels are, and there's multiple channels in this process, and how are you going to sell to them, and what are the channels' needs? A good example, somebody brought up selling to um, Walmart or Walgreens. Each of those buy in a different way. So you have to know how they buy, what percentage they're going to get of the profits, how much you're going to be able to transfer into their warehouses, what is their payment terms, all of these areas you have to understand. Every customer is different, so in reality, you have approximately five major customers when you're exporting from Korea into the United States which makes it very interesting. That's on a normal product. If you're a high-tech product, you have over 20 different ways of entering the U.S. market, from a merger and acquisition to a direct sales team. Which is the best for you? How much revenue can you make from each one? And you have to really do that analysis. If you don't, you're not prepared to enter the market. And there, like I said, there's a lot of different ways to do it. There's a lot of different ways to be successful in doing it, but most companies don't understand what's out there and the ways to do it. Chuck here? Um, yeah, I think Jack really uh, got the guts of that. But uh, I think uh, invest in relationships. I think uh, going into any new market, uh, what's really going to make the difference between success and failure is your relationships. and the people, the team that you build on the ground. Uh, and, and I've seen it in different markets, I've seen it multiple times. You invest in that, you can crack the hardest market. Uh, we, we took a American payments company to Afghanistan, and uh, you know, they, they, they've done exceedingly well there. And that's just because we had really, really good uh, local partners. So I think the PR, PR is another area. Comms and PR, I think, is something that uh, foreign startups coming to the U.S. again should invest in. I think it makes life a lot easier for everybody to do that. Ben, you've worked with a lot of uh, foreign companies through Founders Institute. Uh, any thoughts that you know? Any examples that come to mind of companies that have done it well, companies that haven't? 
Uh, sure. Um, actually, one that comes to mind isn't a Founder Institute company, but one that I have seen pitch recently from the Korean community, uh, which was Lollycam. Um, they found this fantastic way to manipulate live video. Um, in the Korean market, you know, they were kind of fashioning it after the, the K-pop stars, and they would give people big eyes and kind of a fair face tone, and it selling really well. You know, the, the K-pop stars are using it, and it's getting mass distribution. When they looked to come to the US, they thought about their new customer market, right? Because that's exactly what it is. It's not expanding, it's identifying a new customer market and going after them. So what they do, they didn't focus on the big eyes and, and complexion, they focused on sports teams, um, because the US is crazy about their sports teams, which I thought was brilliant. Um, you know, and, and when it comes down to it, it is really about knowing your customer, and then also distribution. So I think Ripple Buds was doing a great job about identifying the fact that they need to find their distribution partners, and then also going through Kickstarter and launching and using that as a launch mechanism here. So. Great. Um, we've got a few more minutes, so if any of the uh, Korean entrepreneurs have any questions, if you just want to stand up and shout them out. Any, any questions about marketing, about entering the U.S.? Don't be shy. Can't have all the answers. No? Okay. So uh, other, as, as we wrap it up, other, other thoughts that, that you'd like to, to get across? Ben, why don't uh, you add whatever you'd like, and then we'll come back this way. Any other things that you think could be beneficial to, to help these companies enter the U.S. market and be successful? Uh, yeah, I mean, just to kind of reiterate what these guys were saying earlier, it's really about knowing your audience, and as I said before, like, telling the best story possible. And in telling your best story, everything you say needs to be related to, like, your end goal. So, inserting these elements that are going to confuse people, whether it be a different name or an ancillary market, I think, I can't remember the name of the company, but they were talking about the, the wristwatch, and at the very end, all of a sudden diverged onto the steering wheel thing. And I'm like, well, that's a completely different product. Yes. Um, and if you confuse people like that, I mean, people are going to just check out immediately. So try to avoid that. Tell a good story. Yeah, as, as Mr. Jobs said, focus, 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 and don't, don't confuse us with, with something on the left field. Chuck it. Yeah, just to add to that, I think, you know, just uh, taking a small geography, even if you're coming into the US, uh, don't try and bite off everything uh, that you can, you know, find good distribution, uh, you know, maybe focus on a, on, on a major metro uh, or, a, or a geographic area, focus on setting up distribution, but, but really, I mean, paying attention to uh, the differences between your own market and this market or other markets that you're operating. I mean, one size definitely doesn't fit all. Right. And Jack, I know you've written a book on this that I think is being used in 11 different countries, but so any, any final suggestions, thoughts, tips that you might have? Number one, know your customer. Be business people and work the deal to be flexible. In other words, what you're saying is a lot of the presentations told me what they're going to charge, how much revenue they're going to make, all of this stuff right now, and they're not even in the market. They haven't even addressed anybody in the market. And I'll tell you, from my experience, most of those numbers that were presented up there before are wrong. That's not what you're going to get. On the other hand, you need to work your whole process of what it's going to cost from your manufacturing to what that retailer is going to charge in the United States. And you need to know all the pieces of that puzzle together to do that. And then you need to know which channels you're going to go through to be able to sell. That's really key. And then you can do work the numbers backwards so you know how much revenue you have, you know who's going to charge and so forth, and you need to get all that in place before you do anything. Then these guys that are in front of you if you're looking for money are going to be able to give you money because you've got your act together. And the more you have your act together, the more it is, it's easier to get money. Believe me. I'm investing right now, and everything I'm telling you is what I'm looking for. The difference between myself and these, these distinguished men over here is that I put the marketing pieces together. I don't need to know a lot of what they're doing because I can see, from my years of experience at Cisco and others, how to put the package together and really negotiate. So it's a little different way of working. 
But these guys are key that the more you can give them the information they need, the more your valuation of your company is going to be, the more money you're going to make. It's that simple. Jack, uh, and just one, just one thing to wrap up. In the defense of the companies that pitch today, inv invest, investors want to know what, what the numbers are going to look like. Uh, I've, I've been an angel investor for 15 years, and I want to see projections. I want to see five-year projections, and no one ever believes those five-year projections are optimistic, but you need those. And as you say, they may not be based in, in, all, in coming with uh, Silicon Valley expertise, but they, they've got to come up with something. And again, I want to thank all these companies for, for coming up here and pitching, which is clearly not easy. And I want to thank the panel for your input, and I hope the rest of the afternoon goes well for everybody. Thank you very much.